So enter the role of FFR angio. And before I talk about the clinical experience with FFR angio, I do want to talk a little bit about how it works. And just for those on the call who are new to the system, what is the sort of mechanism, how it works? So the first step is this 3D model reconstruction that the algorithm creates. And the system, which is you know, very clever software, compensates for these small motions during image acquisition. So you take a good quality coronary angiogram in multiple orthogonal planes as one should do in routine good clinical practice. And the, the system will compensate for if any small motions. It then carefully evaluates each image in each of these orthogonal planes for adequacy of the image using an AI algorithm. And then based on taking information from at least three different distinct image planes, it then renders this 3D model to depict the true 3D volumetric geometry, accounting for eccentricity, tortuosity, side branches, tapering vessels, to create this 3D model reconstruction of the coronary tree. And that's the first step. The second step is to assess for the presence and significance of a stenosis, or, or in this case, converting a stenosis to resistance in this flow circuit. And the software scans and analyzes each branch and bifurcation. Now in the new version of this software, this branch identification and vessel identification is done in an automated fashion. So it takes a lot of the user operator um, manual labor out of it. It then uses this three image redundancy to ensure that there's proper lumen tracings to make sure we're tracing the outline and give 3D QCA measurements. Once it's done this, it then calculates flow resistance along each vessel segment based on the geometry in that 3D model, the diameter and the length based on that luminal model. The whole arterial network or the tree is modeled much like an electrical circuit. And the way that the computer is working out is dividing the the coronary tree into segments. And each segment's contribution to the flow in the coronary vascular bed is based on its resistance and network arrangement, just like you would have um, circuits in series or circuits in parallel. And then this pressure flow analysis based on the presence of this resistance and the, and the path of flow quickly calculates an FFR at every point. So it's not a discrete one point, but it's a continuous measure across the coronary tree. And you can see there the image on the left turns into the algorithm in the image of the right of this multiple sort of array circuit with resistance calculated at every point based on the flow through the coronary circulation on angiography. And so putting it all together, it takes those first angiographic pictures to create a 3D reconstruction. That reconstruction is then broken down to provide this resistance analysis and FFR. And then finally resulting in this coronary 3D model that you see on the right here, where you have an output of the FFR, but you also have an output of the uh, myocardium at risk and the contribution of the variability in FFR based on this color model to the overall myocardium at risk, which really gives you a lot of valuable information as to the impact of this abnormal FFR on the total myocardium. So looking at the interface, this is what you're getting at the end of your analysis. The first thing you get is the most important, which is the FFR value, which straight away is gonna tell you is this clinically significant or insignificant. The second is you get the 3D model of the coronary tree, which is color coded by FFR, which very quickly to the eye draws you to the area of the lesion or the segment, particularly if it's a long diffuse lesion, that is of interest and may need to be treated. It also will give you an idea if there are multiple lesions in parallel or in series or in side branches, and other aspects of the coronary tree, which may also need to be treated. That color pie chart you can see here depicted by C is the impact score, which characterizes, as I mentioned, the overall disease burden and the extent of myocardium that's impacted by that abnormal FFR. Above in those three panels, you have the angiograms, which are overlaid with the QCA and FFR to help you correlate what you're seeing angiographically with what the physiological assessment and output is. It's kind of like a, an overlay of, of, of what you're seeing on your screen routinely with the angiogram. And then finally, very importantly and, and very excitingly with this newest generation of software is the sizing tool and 3D QCA, which is incredibly helpful and can be adjusted to tell you what size stent should we be putting in and how long a stent should we be putting in to treat the area of interest. And this is incredibly useful because as we know, our naked eye is not good at assessing 
the size of stents. We often underestimate the size of stent. We often underestimate the degree of expansion. And certainly a lot of studies show we miss the entirety of the lesion length. Now we have a physiological hemodynamically governed way of sizing not just the diameter, but also the length of stent to be treated. So it's sort of the next step in, in appropriate PCI.